if you can see me through the legs of my workbench, I got my workbench turned upside down and I've got the legs uh, attached with some clamps to the frame and what I've done is I've cut a pattern that's going to be the exact dimension of my stretcher for the end that end down there and this end and I've also cut a long one for the long side of my workbench and that will fit right in there like that okay I'm going to make this as square as I can so the next operation is going to be to cut some mortises in my legs and you saw before that I was uh, making a pattern I've got a couple test pieces in here and the last one I made is just perfectly centered I like that I'm going to use that for my legs and here is my template that I'm going to use with my router so we'll, so we'll mill up all these mortises and then we'll move on to the stretchers and make the tenons to fit them now one of the things I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a template and I'm also going to use a scrap piece of wood and make a test mortise that works out very well and using this uh, template or this guide is basically a pattern and that's going to assure that all my mortises are very uniform so when I go to make my tenon they're all going to match and be basically interchangeable now in the previous clips I made a test mortise and I only went down about a half an inch. I've got a plunge router. It's a Freud. It's a very good router. And I just simply go down a little ways and plunge in deeper. And my final dimension for my mortise is about an inch and a half deep. And I just keep working on that till I get all the way down. And I think there's no better way to cut a mortise in a piece of wood then using a router and I just keep going down and I do this with all my legs so I've got my respirator on I've got hearing protectors on and here I've just got a vacuum and I'm cleaning out that mortise and on to some more routing and this takes a little bit of time but it's not too bad now I'm going to speed this up because you can't really see very much. I don't have a very good camera angle and we'll move on to the next part of the project. Well you're looking at one of the legs on my workbench and to me the essence of woodworking or wood turning or whatever you're doing sometimes simply means figuring out a technique or a procedure that you're going to repeat over and over again and one of those repetitive techniques that I did on my my legs was make this mortise the next thing is to make the tenon let me show you a couple things I did when I made my mortises they're all identical they're all spaced the same uh, from the floor from the bottom of my bench this is a mortising jig that I had for years and years well didn't quite work so what I did was I made another mortising jig and I used that with my router and what I did was I attempted to uh, make that mortise in a scrap piece of wood until I got it right and that's the one right here which matches the ones in my legs now let me show you what allowed me to do that with my router. All right, now what I have in my router is a template guide. If you look at my mortise template, there's just a cavity right here, and this collar runs along the outside of that. Now I didn't get it right the first time I made my mortising jig, and I had to add a couple little pieces of wood right here. A little bit sloppy, but it works fine. All right, now here is an entire set of uh, template guides. And there's all different kinds of uh, 
dimensions to those. Some are rather large and they're for smaller or larger routers. This is what fits up into your um, router base that screws in there. One of the template guides just fits down in there like that. And you can find one that works. Some of those are, are rather small. Anyway, that works perfectly. This is one of the stretchers that's going to go in the long part of my workbench. And I need to cut that down to length. And I also need to make a tenon on the end of this to fit into my mortise. And like I mentioned before, it's all about coming up with a procedure that works because I have to repeat this four times. All right, now the first thing I need to do right now is to measure and mark and cut the dimension of my stretcher for my long uh, side of the workbench. Now, this is just a very simple marking technique. I've got two pieces of wood. I got them clamped together, a couple little C-clamps, and I put each end inside the mortise right here. And I've established the entire length of my stretcher. And the other dimension I have to mark is the depth of my mortise. And mark that on the end of my stretcher. And cut that wood out and that'll be my tenon. And the remaining wood will be the length of this uh, pattern right here that goes in between right there. That's that exact dimension. And both sides need to be identical for my entire framework of my base to be uh, square. Well, here I am peering through a sea of legs. My next operation is to form the tenon on my stretchers. This is a prototype. I'm all about making a model or a prototype of something, and this is going to come in very handy. I got my caliper set to the dimension of this tenon right here. And what I'm going to do is mark each individual uh, stretcher on the end so I don't mess up. Because here's what I found. This fits in here very nicely. And if I take this prototype tenon and move it to the other end, it doesn't fit. It'll fit the diagonal leg over there, but I've got to be careful I don't mess up. So what I'm going to do again is mark the end of my stretchers. So I'm going to take this over on my bandsaw and cut these out. Now keep in mind I'm making this workbench without the aid of a table saw, a joiner, or a planer. I had all those tools and I sold them. So a lot of you guys are going to chuckle at the uh, procedures I'm uh, employing here, but let's move on. Now, my initial thought for making this tenon was to go over on my radial arm saw and just nibble away all that wood. Well, I tried this particular prototype tenon on my bandsaw and it worked really well. So I'm all set up to make my first cut. Now, on my bandsaw table, I've got a long piece of wood that's going to be my depth stop for the depth of my tenon. And I'll make all my cuts with that going up to that piece of wood, wherever they may be. So I have this set up right now to make this wide edge. And I'm going to make this cut on all four pieces of my wood and then just sequence through and make all these cuts. Now I decided that on this face right here, which is going to be toward the bottom or, or the, toward the floor, I'm not going to have a shoulder on that. So I really just need to make three cuts on each piece of wood.
Okay, now I'm going to cut the other cheek that's going to form my tenon. Alright, now I'm making my final cut on my long stretchers. Alright, now the last operation is to simply make these shoulder cuts all the way around. I've got three cuts and that will expose my tenon right here. And I've also got this clamp set to the correct dimension of my shoulder cut. Now that did a fairly good job. I can see I need to make just a little bit of an adjustment. So I'm kind of considering this as my test cut. And I'm going to just go ahead and, and uh, round these corners over and just do a test fit and see how that works. Okay, I've taken the time with a rabbit plane and a little block of wood with some sandpaper glued to it to fine tune my tenon. Now when I made my prototype, right here. I've got the thickness of this tenon a little bit too large or too thick and that way I can fine-tune the thickness. Now the other thing I did when I made my mortise with my router is I just left these corners round and I find that it's a little bit easier in the long run just to round over the corners of the tenon when it goes to uh, when it's time to fit these together. Now I got that pretty snug right there and I think that's going to be a good joint once I get that clamped in there. So on to the next joint. Now I'm proceeding with my short stretchers and I've decided on this joint to make a round mortise and tenon. The mortise is simply a drilled hole that I'll put in there with a Forstner bit and right here I'm doing a little bit of sawing on the shoulder that will be my round tenon and this procedure helps prevent any chip out as I turn this round tenon. Now here is a clip from later on in my video showing the round mortise and tenon joint that I'm going to use in my leg. Well, I told you it was a wood turner's workbench anyway. Let me run you through the steps here. I'm taking a little bit of wood off with a spindle gouge on my round tenon. And I'm cutting a lot of this footage out because this takes quite a while. I'm working on the very first one. Now what I have on the end of my lathe right there is a little block of wood with a hole drilled in it. And that's the size of my tenon. So periodically you'll see me stop and check that right there and I continue to work with the skew chisel right here taking wood off and I'm really quite a ways away from the final dimension of that. Let's check it again. Still not sized up correctly. Take a little bit more wood off with my skew chisel. Try it again. And that just begins to fit on correctly. Now I'm using a beading and parting tool to take off wood 
and I continue to check it and it goes on a little bit further, a little bit further each time. I've just got that little block of wood hung on my tailstock. It's not moving, so it's safe. Well, and that's the way it should look. I've got my little block of wood on there and I've got the tenon size correctly. This one took a little bit longer, so the rest of them won't take quite so much time. Let's move on. It's Friday, January something, 2019. I spent most of yesterday preparing for the glue up. And I've got all my joints ready to go. I got my round tenons completed from uh, turning on the lathe. And that's the last thing you saw. Everything is ready. I'm gonna readjust my camera and by the day's end today, I'm gonna have this workbench up and running. I do have a little bit of fine tuning. I'm gonna add some uh, accessories to it that I'll show you in the final video, whenever that may be. So let's uh, readjust the camera and we'll move on. Now let me show you a couple little details. One thing I didn't show you, I drilled a hole right here in the leg for my round tenon. That all fits very nicely. It's uh, nice and snug, it's perfect. All right, now I've checked and double checked and I think I've got everything at hand that I need. I got a nice long clamp here. I've got some glue. I've got my little container of water to clean up my glue spills. And I'm gonna just use some good old tight bond. There's, there's nothing better than a wood to wood connection than tight bond glue. So I've got a brush here someplace. Get my little brush. And I'm ready, and I think, I think Coco is ready. All right. So I'm going to apply glue to my mortise and tenon, each one of those. And I'm going to glue this up in two sections. I'm going to glue up my long stretcher on each side, and then I'm going to glue up the short stretcher in between. Get a nice liberal coat of glue in there. Glue up both sides of my mortise. Now apply some glue to the tenon on each end of my stretcher. And I do have all these components well marked so I don't get something backwards. Now I've got these two legs just clamped temporarily to the frame of my workbench. So I'm gonna work my stretcher in there. And keep in mind, everything is upside down. So this is gonna be the top after I flip my bench over. There we are. Okay, now I'm gonna get a clamp on there temporarily. All right, that's not too bad. Now I have a couple minutes before that glue starts to set up. So I need to check a couple things. Got a good square here, and I'm gonna make sure that uh, everything's squared up, ready to go. Okay, now I've double checked all the dimensions here. 90 degrees, this looks good right here. I've got the same dimension 
from the bottom of my leg to right here, it's identical on either side. So there's three or four different dimensions I've got to check here to make sure everything's squared up. Now again, I'm not going to connect the top of my leg to the bottom of the workbench. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. I'll have to see how my workbench performs. I don't plan on doing lots of heavy work on this bench. It's a wood turner's bench. And one more thing, I need to make a shout out to Mike Patrick for helping me with uh, planing down some of this wood, letting me use his tools. I really appreciate that. And also my neighbor Chuck. So I couldn't do it without those guys because I don't have those tools anymore. Anyway, let's let this dry in the meantime. Now, while I'm letting this set up in the clamps, I'm going to take some leather and start working on my, my vise. And I'm going to attach some leather to the face of my vise and also the opposite end where it's going to hit the frame. So I'll get back to you and we'll glue up the other side of this. Now, as I go about gluing in this round tenon into the mortise. I've made such a really, really nice suction fit. It just pushes all the glue out. So I've got to kind of get in there and take my brush and remove a lot of the glue because I simply can't push it down there any further. So I'm off to find a mallet, see if I can beat that into submission, but that doesn't work. So I take it out and just uh, remove some of that glue with my brush and then it goes in. It's a good fit and uh, the glue up works well later on. There I am just removing some of the glue at the bottom of that mortise. Well, after about an hour or so gluing and clamping, I finally got the base of my workbench together. Now, one thing I was sure to do was make sure the top of my legs were in contact with the underside of my workbench. And I've got clamps on diagonal corners clamping this down just to make sure. And then I glued up these final stretchers. Now I'm going to let this dry for a couple hours and get some help and I'll turn this over and I'll show it to you. All right, now I'll give you some more close-ups of my dovetails. I think uh, they turned out pretty well. But here's one of the features I've got on this bench. It's a shelf right here. And my initial intention was to have this available for a small lathe. And I would probably put some supports like, like some legs or something here to support that. But I think that would handle very nicely a small lathe. And I measured the distance from the top of this shelf to the floor. It's about 32 inches, which is a good height for uh, setting a little lathe. Well, we are at the end of video five and at the end of this series on making a wood turner's workbench. You'll see this clip in video one with the introduction and my lovely wife Cheryl and I at our bench. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging in there. Uh, check out the links I have in the description. There's a lot of good information there. And again, thank you for staying with me during this project. I'll talk to you later.